Hi, I'm Chef Steven. Welcome to the Okeechobee Tasting Room, where we have a tiny kitchen. We put out great big flavors. Today we're making a chocolate covered cherry wine. Now starting off, we have a, a wine kit. Uh, we have all of our uh, ingredients in this kit that we need and we're going to add some special flavorings. Um, starting out with uh, the uh, bag of uh, grape must that I will add to uh, uh, five gallons of uh, reverse osmosis water. We have our additives, we have our uh, chocolate and our black cherry. Uh, we have uh, 30 uh, new and or, or used recycled uh, bottles that we'll use later on when we're bottling. Uh, we've cleaned everything with star sand, which is a uh, food grade acid, which sterilizes everything. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add bentonite to, uh, to our water. Bentonite will initially make the water cloudy, but it clears, uh, it helps clear the dead yeast out of the uh, wine until it is uh, uh, ready. Okay, we'll mix the bentonite around until it's all dissolved. Now we're ready to add the, uh, actually the wine, the actual, the, the juice. Uh, it's called a must, which is uh, basically, if you remember Lucy and Ethel, or Lucy stomping grapes, this is product from, from her stomping, although <laughs> it's not done like that much anymore. Uh, and we definitely didn't use that in our, uh, in our wine product. So here we go, we're going to try to get every last drop up to the 23 liter mark. Uh, we want as much uh, finished product as possible. Okay, here again, we'll mix it up real well. Uh, we're going to test the specific gravity using our hydrometer, which is going to give us an original reading. And then uh, we will check it again in a couple of weeks to see the change in gravity, plug it into a formula, which will tell us what our ABV or our alcohol by volume is. So we're starting off with 1.07 which is the recommended gravity for this wine. Now we're gonna add our yeast. Uh, yeast is used in a lot of products from bread making, uh, medications, uh, beer, wine. We'll put that in there, sprinkle it on top. Uh, pop our lid on. Now we're going to uh, add our airlock. We've got a jar full of star sand solution over there to my left. And uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll put this airlock in the uh, in a cork in the uh, top of the uh, carboy, which is the container where uh, we're making our wine in. And what this does as as the yeast ferments, it lets off uh, CO2 gas. So it lets it escape. Hi, and welcome back. It's been uh, about two and a half weeks. We're ready to transfer our wine over to the secondary. So what I've done is I've sanitized with the uh, another uh, 
jug here. I've sanitized my siphon hose and we're going to see if we can get the siphon started. So basically what this secondary does is it takes the wine off of the stuff at the bottom which is called lease which is dead yeast and, and uh, what have you. So it takes a few minutes so we will uh, we'll holler back at you in a minute. One thing we want to make sure that we do is uh, keep the siphon off of the, uh, the bottom so we don't suck up all the icky stuff down there. What I've done is I've taken a sample of, uh, of our wine here to see what our next specific gravity reading is. And I'm reading at, at uh, basically 1.01 .01. so we'll write that down and uh, show you how we do the calculation to come up with what our, what our uh, ABV is so as you can see it's siphoning takes it a little while we keep on keeping on you see this jar here that's uh, full of star sand. That's what I've been keeping my uh, hydrometer in. So 1.01, .01, remember that. So I'm going to put it back in there because we'll use that again here in a week or so when we uh, are ready to bottle. So what our process today is going to be is we're getting it off of the off of the lease in the bottom. We're going to kill what yeast is in there using uh, some products. One is called uh, Cheetah Sand. Another one's called Kilosol. We're going to add some uh, potassium sorbate and some sulfite to it. Uh, some of those aid in uh, clearing the wine. Uh, others kill the yeast. Others help preserve it. Then what we'll do also in this session is we're going to add our black cherry flavoring so we'll have a black cherry wine then we're going to add our chocolate flavoring which uh, will give us our chocolate covered cherry flavor so hoping it turns out good um, we'll see I've got my uh, resident wine connoisseur we'll let her taste it and see what she thinks about it too but it's siphoning right away. We want to. We don't want to siphon all of it. We want to leave about uh, two liters in here to top off our uh, wine after we add the flavor. But so far, over the past couple of weeks, you know, we've noticed the uh, the bubbler has uh, been bubbling away. What it does is it allows the CO2 gas to escape, but doesn't allow anything, uh, any bacteria or oxygen to, to get inside our, our wine while we're making it. Okay, we're down to the two liter mark. Okay, we've got about four liters transferred. I'm gonna scoot this out of the way for right now. So I'm move this up here and show you what I'm doing. Uh, 
that over there. Okay, so the first step we want to do is we want to add a pack of sulfite. Now what this does is it, it starts to uh, break down what remaining yeast is in there and kills it off. So we want to put that in there. We want to stir it vigorously. I'll tell you what, I'd probably stir it better if I had it back down here. Actually, a sulfide is, is the preservative. The potassium sorbate is what kills the, uh, kills the yeast. So we're going to add it next. So we're going to add two packs of potassium sorbate. If you're enjoying these videos, uh, please uh, click like and subscribe. It helps us out. Let's me know that people are interested in what I'm doing. This is uh, right now. It's a, it's a hobby for me. So instead of being in our tiny tiny kitchen, we're actually in our uh, our bar out in our Florida room, and uh, we'll probably be doing some cooking out here too. Is where we've got uh, you know the space that we can uh, uh, can use. But this is perfect for for this project. Okay, so we've added our uh, sulfites. We added our potassium sorbate. So our next step uh, is basically what we want to do. It's called degassing. Now degassing is when the yeast is fermenting, when the wine is fermenting, it lets off a gas, it lets off carbon dioxide. So what we're doing now is we're going to try to get it to release as many gas bubbles as we can. So we want it to be bubbly and we want to get all that CO2 out of there that we possibly can. I'm just mixing up and down and around, and splashing and sloshing it around. So today is September 16th. I've actually gone over my two week uh, uh, of initial fermentation. That's okay, because we, we initially started the wine on August the 18th. Uh, I wanted to get the wine done in time because actually part of this is a is a gift to my son and, and uh, future daughter-in-law who are getting married next month and so I just wanted a special treat for them to have for their wedding and maybe take along on their honeymoon with them. Okay, so let's see. Yep, not many bubbles left. But it says to do it for five minutes, so let's uh, let's keep going for five minutes. Okay, that's been about five minutes. I think we've got it adequately degassed. So our next step is to add our flavor. So got here is a bag of black cherry uh, flavoring so we're going to open it up and add it in there ooh, ooh that smells nice
Very nice. Okay, there's our flavoring, our black cherry flavoring added. Now let's add our chocolate. Add the whole bottle and we're going to stir some more. Okay, well let's take and pour some of this uh, into our glass here. Uh, let's give it a try. Mmm, smells good. Definitely taste the cherry. Taste the chocolate. Oh man, that is good. Okay, well, let's continue on with our process. We've got a couple more stages, so steps to do. So we want to add this pack of kilos, kisalol, which helps to clear the wine, and by meaning clear it, it makes it. Uh, so there's nothing floating in it. There's nothing, uh, it clears the wine. It, this makes it clear. So what we have to do is we have to take this and uh, stir this for one minute. Okay, that's been about a minute. Now we're going to add a pack of cheetah sand. Cheetah sand is basically a product made of, uh, of uh, seafood, but it does help and assist in clearing the wine. Okay, so we're going to stir this for another minute. Top it off with our other two liters that we left in the uh, original vessel. Okay, there's all of our additives, our preservatives, our flavorings, all added to the wine. So basically, what we've taken is just a basic red wine and we've turned it into a cherry wine and gave it a uh, chocolate flavor, which we call chocolate covered cherry. It's very good, very nice uh, uh, cordial. Uh, can be used as an aper aperitif. Just a nice, nice flavor. It tastes really good. Okay, let's see if we can get some more out of our uh, siphon here. Now our next step, probably in uh, about a week, we'll uh, transfer it over to the bottles. I'll show you how, to, how we uh, transfer over to the bottles, how we put the corks in. Uh, I've got uh, some label ideas that I've been toying around with. I want it to be special since it's for uh, my son Andrew and his new bride Emily and uh, and then we'll show you how we put the shrink wrap on the top and and the finished product so uh, we'll keep on draining this what I'll do is I'll put the uh, cap back on put some fresh rock water in our airlock let her set for a few more days and, and clear. Alrighty. If you have any comments, questions, leave it down in the comment section. But please like and subscribe. Uh, the Okeechobee Tasting Room is a labor of love. Uh, there's a, not a lot that goes into it, but uh, we do enjoy cooking and, and uh, 
we, as you can tell, we definitely enjoy eating. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you back in a few days. Hi, welcome back. And today is the day that we get to bottle our wine. So let's get started. First thing we have, our sanitized bottles. They've been washed in soapy water and then sanitized with our good old star sand. We've got shrink wrap for the top. We've got our sanitized corks. And uh, let's bottle some wine. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take our uh, siphon. Run in there in our finished wine. And we're going to get our siphon started. is underway. Slowly. First bottle. So the amount of uh, wine that we have, we should be able to get. Well, we want to. We're going to get at least 24 bottles, but uh, I've prepared for about 30. We have somewhere between five and six uh, gallons. Like I said, this batch is one I'm doing for my son and uh, my, my son and his fiance's wedding, which is here a week or so. Wanted to do something special. So as we said the last time, this is about 12% uh, alcohol. Of course, you know that's, that's ABV. That's uh, alcohol by volume, which you know why it's called volume. Because the more alcohol you get, drink, the louder you get. So your volume increases. Sorry, that's a little nerve humor. But I wish, I wish you could feel these bottles. They feel very, very clean, squeaky clean. So a winter project for us this year is going to be, we're going to do a batch of beer. We'll do it outside and uh, invite some of the neighbor guys over. We're going to brew a batch of uh, an Irish, we're going to do an Irish red ale. This has always turned out real well for me. Okay, we're going to do the next step, which I like to do, which makes them more of a Finished product. Is I'm going to put a shrink wrap over the top. Just 
pretty easy process. Keep going. I have my seals here. Heat up a little bit. And we'll just drill around the bottle. Make sure it gets on there nice and tight. We got all the shriek wrap wraps on them. And now, like I've said before, this is part of this is going to be a wedding present, so I'm going to pick out the nicer of the looking bottles, and that's the one we'll present to them. So our next and final step is uh, I'm going to put some labels on. We'll be back and show you the final product. Okay, we've got our labels on. And we're considering this a done project. Here we have our wedding wine. And then we have another case for our private stock. So there you have it. That's our chocolate-covered cherry wine. So, appreciate you watching the Okeechobee Tasting Room, where we have a tiny kitchen and great big flavors. Come back soon. Thanks, y'all. Bye.